It's arguably the largest news conglomerate in the state. No, I'm not talking about the Boston Globe Company. It's Gatehouse Media, which publishes over 100 local newspapers in eastern Massachusetts. But that focus on community news has proven a rough ride for the chain, which is now closing some of its weekly papers in order to regroup. In theory, it made sense. Gatehouse Media combined major regional newspapers like the Patriot Ledger, Brockton Enterprise, and Taunton Daily Gazette, with dozens of smaller community papers, all to reduce costs and leverage advertising. But it's never quite worked, leaving Gatehouse saddled with debt. Now the chain says it's regrouping by closing 10 smaller weekly papers, reportedly to include the Norton Mirror, the Stoneham Sun, and the Wakefield Observer. Gatehouse says no one is being laid off and those towns will still be served online through their wicked local sites. Still, hyperlocal has proven wicked tough. AOL recently closed hundreds of its local patch news sites and Boston.com cut half its Your Town correspondence in August. So maybe the big problem is thinking small. I say here, here to that. I always, I know you've been a big fan of the hyperlocal, Kelly. I was always skeptical that there was a big enough, a broad enough market for that because it's such a niche. And with so fewer and fewer people actually reading papers and half of these things, I don't even know if they're free or what they are, the weeklies, but, you know, the, you got to get a circulation to make any kind of money. And, and with such the Norton paper, I mean, these are small towns. And unless you're scooping up several communities at a time, I never really understood how it could make it. Yeah, I'm not sure that uh, all of these papers that, that got mentioned in the piece are actually going to close. Uh, for instance, I've heard that Stoneham and Wakefield are going to be combined yeah, in yeah, some that, way. That uh, fewer local pages. You know, the problem is a lot of these papers have been around for decades, generations, and they've, they've done very well. Uh, when Gatehouse put this chain together, it built this chain on $1.2 billion worth of debt. And at the time, it seemed like a good idea. And then the newspaper economy went south, and they've been struggling with that ever since. Uh, I think a lot of these papers, maybe not the real small ones, but I think a lot of these papers would be fundamentally sound if they didn't have the corporate debt laid on top of them. Now, Gatehouse is at the moment going through a structured bankruptcy, and maybe when they come out the other side, uh, they can operate these papers a little bit more rationally. I was... Uh, although this is somewhat disturbing, I was heartened to see that there aren't going to be any layoffs associated yeah. with this and that they're actually talking about putting more resources into some of their more successful papers. So this is bad news. It's good news. It's kind of a mix. I think it's part of the part of the bankruptcy that they're doing this. And I think there's some there's some very good news in it. Uh, might be temporary. We don't know how the slide, how long the slide is going to be for these papers, as, as Emily suggests. But this is a case where you remember, as at the same time as the bankruptcy, they acquired those Ottawa papers from Dow Jones, the Cape Cod Times. And uh, uh, that was a big step for them. That was part of the bankruptcy. We remember that bankruptcy, you know, it sounds like terrible, like you're going down the drain, but it's a reorganization. And part of this reorganization calls for them to use their assets in different ways. In this case, closing down the low circulation places and combining them to increase those circulation numbers uh, might, uh, might be a good thing. They might be able to improve the quality of those smaller publications. No, but, no. Well, well, I was just going to, you know, praise I like small papers because <laughs> I know you do. You know, my entire radio show is based on this interesting information that comes from the reporting that goes on in these small papers. I, I really don't think about the economy of it as much as I think about the content of it and what I have appreciated learning from these communities. And I'm certain there's a better way of doing it so it's more efficient. But gosh, what you lose... Um, if you're not covering those communities in the in the very sort of looking closely at it, not from up here, but from there, uh, it makes a difference. I totally agree. Mm -hmm. And I've said it a million mm -hmm. times here. Content is king more so than ever in this environment. If a newspaper, a, a good newspaper like the uh, Quincy Ledger, mm -hmm. uh, the Brockman Enterprise or the Cape Cod Times are providing interesting, unique 
uh, sort of uh, uh, colorful content to their community, they're going to make it. If they don't, they won't. And no amount of consolidation or uh, or, or, or fooling around is going to get it done. People can get the old staples, the uh, community uh, meeting listings, the uh, the school lunches, the honor roll. They can get that online now. Uh, if you're going to survive, you've really got to give people something more. And that's going to cost some money. Is Gatehouse in a position to invest in content? It doesn't appear that they are. I don't know. Well, I, the, even with the good content, John, I think more and more people are just saying what you just said. I read my news on the Internet. And they just don't yeah. bother getting the newspaper at home. Well, they can go online. I don't have a problem with them going <laughs> online. But being, but it's the content online that's, that's available. I'm, I looked at Patch. Some of Patch was dreadful. But a lot of the patch sites were really good, and they covered some mm -hmm. stuff you didn't see before. And in fact, I think I've talked about here about losing the archives of some of the patch because they did good local work that ought to be archived and kept. I mean, Gatehouse has made a, a good start at its online. I mean, they've, they've got a ways to go, but the wicked local approach hasn't has the opportunity, I think, to draw more readers and make the combination with advertisers. Well, they were innovative at the time, but Wicked Local has been kind of dying on the vine for a long time. Wicked cute name, though.